I'm not sure how many of you have been following COP26, but if you have been, then I'm sure that you feel the same way that the rest of us feel. Hopeless. Because even if world leaders are saying everything that they need to say, what matters more is the actions that they're taking to stop global catastrophe and they're just not doing enough you know you'll see the headlines about how you know x country made y commitment and still even if every single country fulfilled their obligations set out under the paris climate agreement even if they kept the promises that they're making today it still wouldn't be enough the planet would still warm more than 1.5 degrees celsius which means we get to see catastrophic levels of climate change when we're older and i find it downright insulting to see democrats like nancy pelosi go on a world stage and declare that america is back baby all because trump is out of office yeah he was a climate change denier he was an imbecile what little progress we made he undid but joe biden isn't the savior that democrats are making him out to be joe biden may be better than Donald Trump. He might be even better than Barack Obama when it comes to climate change. But I don't care about better. I don't care about nibbling around the edges. What I want to do is have a habitable planet when I'm as old as the, these politicians. And it just seems like they don't care about us. They don't care about our future. They don't care about our generations. They get the luxury of living to be in their 70s and 80s, but they're denying that to us. And if we are lucky enough to be around when we're their age, then who knows what we're going to see. So Nancy Pelosi took a question from Abby Martin of Empire Files. Now, she very clearly didn't know who Abby Martin is because Abby Martin is a real journalist. Now, Abby Martin asked her a question, and it really cuts to the core of Nancy Pelosi's hypocrisy and the problem with these politicians. You know, she talks a great game when it comes to climate change, but yet she keeps expanding the military. And the military is one of the largest CO2 emitters in the world, emitting more CO2 than 140 countries combined annually. So Abby Martin asked her about this, and as you're going to see, Nancy Pelosi, along with another Democrat, had no idea how to respond. Wait a minute, wait, I want a woman, I want a woman, a woman, a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gender equality here. Uh, Maybe I don't, but let's see. <laughs> Abby Martin with the Empire Files. Speaker Pelosi, you just presided over a, a large increase in the Pentagon budget. This Pentagon budget is already massive. The Pentagon is a larger polluter than 140 countries combined. How can we seriously talk about net zero if there is this bipartisan consensus to constantly expand this large contributor to climate change, which is exempt from these conferences? Military is exempt from climate talks. Well, I, I just want to use an example, if I can. Um, you know the sea level rise is an important part of, uh, you know, what's happening to the climate. And I am not a defense person, but I've had so many talks with the Defense Department, with the Navy in particular, about how they have to respond to what's going on. So I really do think that there is no reason why what we're putting together, you know, uh, with Build Back Better and other things can't respond to the Defense Department and, and, and have the same impact in terms of reducing emissions. And I do think that the Defense Department is very much aware of the fact that they have to play a major role, both from a strategic as well as, you know, for the good of the world. So I don't see what we're doing in any way or, you know, increasing the defense budget as being something that's inconsistent with climate action. I really don't. And may I just add that um, the National Security Advisors all tell us that the climate crisis is a national security matter. Uh, it is, of course, a health matter for our children, the water they drink, the air they breathe, etc. It is a jobs issue between clean, good, clean technologies uh, being the future of our workforce and the training for all of that. It is a national security issue because of the uh, uh, all of the con conditions that climate crisis produces, I won't go into all of them, but they do ca are cause for migration, conflict over habitat and resources, and again, uh, a security challenge. So it's evident to me that they've never anticipated this question being asked. I can't imagine that they haven't heard about all the CO2 that the military emits, but they certainly never thought that somebody would 
bring up this question and you know it's nice to kind of catch them off guard because that's when you really see the true colors of politicians um but nancy pelosi responded to that question by saying well you know national security advisors tell us that climate change is a national security threat okay what do you want me to do with that information what does that mean what are the implications of this does that mean that they're going to stop emitting all of this co2 are we going to ramp down military operations what does that mean? And if you really think about it, I, I think what it probably means is that the military acknowledges that climate change is a national security threat, but the way that they're going to respond to that is not by reducing CO2 emissions, but trying to bomb their way through all of these new national security threats. So if climate change is going to spawn, you know, uh, new waves of migrants, that's fine. We'll just use the military to address that. What's that? There's going to be wars over water. Well, we've got we've got a really great big military. It's it's just it's a fucking joke and it's insulting. And Frank Pallone Jr. he chimed in and he said, um, you know, I don't know how increasing the defense budget is inconsistent with climate action. Are you stupid? Because she just told you. Because the U.S. military alone emits more CO2 than 140 countries combined. So how can you not see how it's inconsistent? How do you not see why everything you're saying is hypocritical because you're saying one thing and then doing something completely different? He also says, you know, um, there's no reason why what we're putting together with Build Back Better and other things can't respond to the Defense Department and have the same impact. So are you saying that Build Back Better is going to see the military size be reduced? Because I don't think there's any provisions within BBB that talks about that. So what are you even saying? And this is this is the issue. They'll say what they think we want to hear, and then they'll just keep doing business as usual. And I can't not think that it's because they don't care. Again, Nancy Pelosi, she's 81 years old. 81 years old. Not trying to be ageist, but she lived a very, very long life. If I am lucky enough to live to be as old as Nancy Pelosi... If I am uh, 81 years old, that'll be nearly 2070. It'll be 2068. See, she gets to just see the beginning of catastrophic climate change, you know, warmer weather, more extremes, more hurricanes. When I'm that old, I don't know what the fuck to expect. Who knows what world we'll be looking at? I'm sure I'll be seeing the beginning of the end of humanity's existence. I'm sure I'll see the start of society's unraveling. I don't know what the fuck to expect. Will I see wars over water? Probably won't even have to wait that long. She got to live a really nice old life, but she's denying that to other generations because they don't have to be around to see the consequences of their actions. So I can't help but think they don't care. They know what's needed to be done. They know. They know exactly what they need to do and they're not doing it. They're killing us. They're killing us. Now, to give you some more context about what Abby Martin was talking about, just so you know the extent to which the military emits, you know, uh, greenhouse gas emissions and why this is the case, Newsweek explains the U.S. military's carbon boot print is enormous. Like corporate supply chains, it relies upon an extensive global network of container ships, trucks, and cargo planes to supply its operations with everything from bombs to humanitarian aid and hydrocarbon fuels. Our new study calculated the contribution of this vast infrastructure to climate change. Greenhouse gas emissions accounting usually focuses on how much energy and fuel civilians use, but recent work, including our own shows that the U.S. military is one of the largest polluters in history, consuming more liquid fuels and emitting more climate-changing gases than most medium-sized countries. If the U.S. military were a country, its fuel usage alone would make it the 47th largest emitter of greenhouse gases in the world, sitting between Peru and Portugal. Now, Forbes adds, a new report from Brown University has estimated that since the invasion of Afghanistan in 2001, the U.S. military has emitted 1,212 million metric tons of greenhouse gas Gases. In 2017 alone, CO2 emissions added up to 59 million tons, more than many industrialized nations, including Sweden and Switzerland. BP's Statistical Review of World Energy records carbon dioxide emissions in different countries, and in 2017, total estimated CO2 emissions in Sweden came to 48 million tons by comparison. The U.S. military also produced more greenhouse gases than Morocco, Peru, Hungary, Finland, New Zealand, and Norway. According to the research from Brown University, the Pentagon would be the world's 55th largest CO2 emitter if it was a country. 
So it varies based on the report and how they calculate it. But looking at this graph here, the U.S. military is one of the largest emitters. This is from 2017. As you can see, it passed Morocco, Sweden, Finland, Switzerland. And again, this is just our military, not the country, just the military alone. It's almost inconceivable that this is real, but it is. And yet Democrats keep expanding the military budget even more. So when we're thinking about climate change, if you're not actually factoring in the military into this equation, then um, you're, you're not doing enough. You're not doing enough, right? You're not serious about the threat that this poses to humanity. So I absolutely give Abby Martin credit for actually holding someone in power accountable and asking a good question. Um, I will use this time, of course, to promote more good work from Abby Martin. She's working on a film right now. It's called Earth's Greatest Enemy. And I don't know if I can play the teaser trailer because it has music that might be copyrighted. But, you know, I'll link to it down below. And if you're watching this on a different platform other than YouTube, you can go to earthsgreatestenemy.com to see the teaser. Uh, this is basically a full film about this very subject, the extent to which the U.S. military is one of the largest contributors to climate change. So overall, you know, um, it's really nice to see these politicians squirm. But ultimately, you know, if, if they're going to talk the talk, then... They need to walk the walk, and we shouldn't applaud them for just doing the bare minimum and saying what they need to say. Now, we're to a point where we have a limited window left to act, and we need to see some fucking action, and not just nice words.